happy to welcome Carrie Pack to the podcast as part of the official 2016 GRL blog tour. Carrie is a part-time college professor and author of Designs on You and In the Present Tense. Carrie lives in Florida, which she fondly calls America's Wang, with her husband and four cats, and she's currently working on her next novel. Thanks for being with us, Carrie. Oh, thanks. I'm glad to be here. So tell us about your latest In the Present Tense and what its inspirations were. Sure. Um, I This is a time travel adventure, kind of. Um, not kind of, it is. Um, about a man named Miles who um, wakes up to find that he is married to a woman. And in his mind, he's gay. So he's like, what the heck has happened in my life? And um, finds out, you know, that no, he's bisexual. He's been married to this woman for a little over a year. And um, this is how he finds out he's been time traveling. His wife tells him, no, this is a thing that happens to you. This must be the first time that you're remembering it or whatever. And so kind of the story progresses from there. Meanwhile, his younger self, he's about 17, is obsessed with getting back together with an ex-boyfriend. His current self wants to stay married to the wife. Um, And then cue... uh, a kind of evil corporation trying to, you know, get the secret to time travel and everything kind of goes to hell. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. And time travel is very in right now. It's Good. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> movies and TV and everything. Do you have a particular favorite time travel story or movie or TV? Wait, let's see if you can see my shirt. Back to the Future. That's a classic. <laughs> Isn't that everybody's favorite? It's certainly, I would, I would have to imagine, among them. <laughs> I just saw a list the other day, and I was like, it was ranking, like, I think, like, 41 time travel movies or something. And I disagreed with almost all of them, but Back to the Future was at the top. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll tolerate this list. Okay. And it, it's certainly popular, at least, you know, you've got the CW shows that have, like, Legends of Tomorrow and The Flash and stuff all doing their time travel stuff. Oh, The Flash has been out of control with the time travel, like, just everywhere which I love, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a little all over the place. Um, I, but I love that show. I'm, I'm big into, I mean, I love all time travel. Like, honestly, even something like Outlander, which predominantly ends up with the main character in, you know, 1800 Scotland. Um, you know, still, there's a time travel element to it. So I'm like, okay, I'm sold. <laughs> what, did you have to do special research? Or did you make up your own time travel rules? Um, a little of both. Uh, I based, um, my main character, his condition is based in a dissociative disorder. So it's a little bit like, um, dissociative identity disorder where instead of having alternate personalities, he shifts in time. Um, so I tied it very closely to that. Personally, I like science fiction and time travel better when it's rooted in reality. It makes more sense to me. I can suspend disbelief where I need to when there are those connections to real things. Um, but it's also, there's a, there's an explanation for it kind of late in the book and this might be spoilery. So fair warning. Um, but there is a little bit of an explanation where it is tied to the theory of relativity, where the closer you travel to the speed of light, you know, you're going to travel in time. And um, that's kind of how it gets explained to him as to why he can, his brain synapses fire that fast, which who knows if that would even be plausible. That's my playing with science. There's the fiction in science fiction. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I, uh, I I used a little bit of both, but I did a lot of research into uh, mental illness because if you're going to tie something to a very real condition, you have to consider the people that have those conditions. I mean, there's another character who time travels through her schizophrenia and, you know, you don't want to be disrespectful to people who live with that very real mental illness every day. How did you decide in the long run that you struck the right balance there between your sci-fi side and the presenting actual mental illness appropriately? Oh, um, you know, I don't know that I'm a hundred percent sure that I did. I hope that I did. Um, I've, I've gotten some good reception on that part. Um, personally, I, you know, I have depression and anxiety, so I feel like I have a little bit of, of a place to come to from, from that where I can say, 
I know there's a stigma behind mental illness. I know that people are unwilling to talk about it. And, you know, there's a conversation a couple characters have where um, Miles's ex-boyfriend actually talks to his wife and says, you know, are you going to, you know, a therapist or anything? Is there, any, you know, because this has got to be horrible, horribly traumatic on you. Um, you know, nearly every character in this book has some period of mental illness, whether it's a brief period of, of depression or, you know, a longer period of depression and anxiety, all the way up to, like I said, schizophrenia. Um, so I hope I got the balance right. Um, but I, like I said, I was trying to really be respectful and there's a lot of discussion about, you know, it's okay to seek treatment. You should seek treatment. This is an illness. It's okay to accept medication and, and therapy and, you know, whatever combination of that's going to work for you. Of course, there are some people that really maybe don't have the, um, mentally ill characters, best interest at heart and manipulate that a little, but you know, it, it's, it's fiction. You got to have a little bit of leeway there. You can't be towing that line all the time. Sure. Now you had a personal revelation writing this novel as well, right? I did. Um, I have, since I was an adolescent, felt attracted to women. And, but I've exclusively dated, I'm married to a man. Um, and for, so for a long time, I remember as, a, as an adolescent actually going, I'm not a lesbian. I don't, I know I'm attracted to boys. What's going on? And um, I, I think that there's so much talk right now about bi erasure. It just kind of came to a head for me where I thought, you know, I want to write a bisexual character. I want to explore this because these are, this is a marginalized group, you know, and even within the LGBT community sometimes because there's that you're either not gay enough or not straight enough or, you know, you don't really fit into either. And as I'm exploring that, it occurs to me that this is an identity that I can claim. Um, you know, I mean, I could say I've been bisexual since I was in middle school, but I wasn't able to label it that until I wrote this and went, it's okay to say that if that's how you identify even if I've never been in a relationship with a woman, that's okay. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of the revelation that it was, you know, I knew I had that attraction. I knew I, my sexuality was more fluid. I wasn't, you know, extreme on, you know, I wasn't completely straight on the Kinsey scale. Uh, if you want to use that as a fr framework, but, um, that, you know, I knew that I wasn't, but I didn't have a way to quantify it because I, am I a fraud if I haven't, Ha if I haven't kissed, well, I have kissed women, but if I haven't been in a relationship with a woman or I haven't had sex with a woman, does that erase that part of me? And it doesn't, it doesn't. And to be able to say that I am bisexual and be okay with that was very freeing, but it's still hard to say. <laughs> Amazing. Did you, as you were writing, did it come out like while you were plotting it or just in the general writing of it or? Um, a little of both. Um, some of it was actually after the fact. You know, I was talking to people about writing a bisexual character and realized, you know, they would say to me, you know, you don't have to have been in a relationship with a woman, you know. Um, but while writing it, there is very much a connection with the main character, Miles, who in high school is pretty much just attracted to guys. You know, he thinks he's gay. He really does. He's just because he hasn't really met a woman that he is attracted to yet. He's not really into that. He's, he's just obsessed with his current boyfriend, which you'll, if you read the book, you'd see he's just obsessed um, in a good way. But, um, but you know, doesn't really figure it out until later when he's in college and he, he meets a girl that's just kind of his, it just, he needs a casual relationship and she's just a good friend who he happens to start seeing and realizes that, you know, he, he might be a little more attracted to men, but that he still, you know, has, has a connection to women. And then of course he gets married and, and, you know, obviously that, that solidifies it for him. But yeah, it was definitely, that was my experience. You know, I definitely have more of an attraction to men. Um, but man, I can stare at a woman and <laughs> be just as attracted, you know, if it's the right woman. So I, you know, I think that that was definitely, um, happened to me while I was writing. I realized that a little bit more about myself. Interesting. Oh, that's awesome that you, that you were able to get that. I'm going to have to pick up this book cause I'm totally intrigued now between the time travel, the different characters and yeah, everything going on I, in it. Good. Yay. That's what I'm hoping. So, so what's coming up next for you? Um, I'm currently working on, I'm total, I'm such a genre jumper. It's ridiculous. I, I'm driving my uh, publisher crazy. Cause they're like, you're, how are you going to get an audience? I'm going to get an audience. I'm going to do it. Um, <laughs> no matter what, but I'm That's working right. On Have that attitude. That's good. Um, well, you know, and I, there's thematic things in my work. Like I, I always write about finding your true self. You know, that's something for me that 
I, I have a very strong personality. And so for me, I really work on writing these characters who find a way to be true to themselves under the most, and obviously in this book, under some pretty crazy circumstances. So um, my next book is actually going to be YA. And I'm writing um, about uh, the time period during the Riot Girl movement of the early 90s. Um, kind of my time a little bit. I was a little on the young side to really be able to, you know, get really involved in the punk scene or the riot girl scene. But there's a lot of parallel in that culture with what we're seeing in feminism and young women today. And um, I wanted to write that. And now that I've kind of made my revelation about bisexuality, I'm writing a teenage bisexual girl. So, you know, she's, I'm giving myself, I guess, a little redemption there. (laughs) Awesome. So what are you looking forward to in Kansas City this year? Um, you know, this is going to be my first year going to Gay Rom Lit. Oh, awesome. Um, I, and I managed to eke into that registration because I know it's a hot commodity. So I'm just kind of hoping to, you know, make some connections and maybe get, find some new readers and, uh, learn a little more about the industry. Um, plus I have family in Missouri, so I'm kind of going to use it as a vacation to visit some family too. So. Nice. It's a two for one. Cheating. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the best way for people to keep up with you? Um, I'm on Twitter. Uh, it's just at Carrie Pack. Um, I'm everywhere, really. <laughs> I'm on Facebook, too. Um, and uh, my website's CarriePack.com. But uh, Twitter's probably the easiest way to find me because it's my name and um, it's pretty, you know, my face with different haircut. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm still there. Um, yeah, so that's probably the easiest way. Okay, awesome. We'll link up to that in the show notes so everybody can find you. And uh, look forward to seeing you in Kansas City. All right. Thanks so much, Jeff.